The year is 1901 and the smallpox epidemic is sweeping the Northeast. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, city officials decide to make the smallpox vaccine mandatory. Those who decline are subject to a $5 fine. Henning Jacobson, a clergyman in the area, declines and refuses to pay what would be around $150 in 2020 dollars. He refused, as did a few others um, who he was running with, if you will, um, and they were fined the $5. And he sued in court, went all the way to the Massachusetts Supreme Court. Uh, he lost there and then uh, filed to the United States Supreme Court. Born was Jacobson v. Massachusetts. Dr. Timothy R. Johnson, a professor of political science and law at the University of Minnesota says Justice John Marshall Harlan cited police power of the state, the power of the state to protect public health and safety as the main reason behind the 7-2 decision to say, yeah, a state can mandate a vaccine in this case. And what the court reasoned, Justice Harlan reasoned in the Jacobson case is, you're right, we do have liberty to our own body unless what's happening with your body could harm everybody else. So certainly you and I both have the liberty to, to do what Whatever we want with our body, but if I'm going to be the only person who won't get the smallpox vaccine and I could then spread smallpox to everybody else around me, that's going to harm the entire society and that's sort of where your liberty ends. To put it simply, the liberty of my body ends where your nose begins. I can certainly swing my arm anywhere at once, but once it hits your nose, I don't have the liberty to be swinging my arm around anymore. Your chance of spreading now applying this to 2020 and beyond, Governor Walls has said he will not mandate the vaccines when they become available. And certainly there will be arguments that surface against inoculation. But the more applicable question may be is the question of whether employers can mandate. Is that still kind of like a gray area? It is and it isn't. I mean, employers can mandate that you get the flu vaccine. But there's pretty clear evidence um, that employers absolutely have the ability to say, right, you need to take a drug test. Yes. Um, you need to abide by particular rules that say you won't sexually harass someone when you're at work. There's a whole host of regulations that you sign off on. And it is pretty clear that most employers also say there are certain vaccines that you need to have to work um, in, in our shop. So solutions, I know nobody asked us about solutions, but Professor Johnson and I talked about it and I want to share it with you. He says when it comes to vaccination rates or compliance or interest in getting the vaccine, uh, things like incentives might be better than a mandate. So for example, an employer can be like, hey, get in line to get this COVID-19 vaccine and we'll give you an ice cream bar or we'll get you free lunch or something like that. Yeah, people might roll their eyes, but people respond to incentives. It gives folks motivation to do good for the whole. But why is it, Sharon, that the governor simply cannot mandate it to happen? Can he do it if compliance is low? Yeah, so I posed this exact question to the governor's folks and they said because these vaccines are coming to us under the emergency use authorization, they are actually not allowed to mandate them. Ah, that makes sense. That's a key difference there. Thank you so much, Sharon.